So one of my goals initially with this channel was to talk about my experience with finding the perfect grill that fit for my cooking scenario. You know, I had a Weber gas grill, which I loved. It was, it was a great grill, but I got to the point where I didn't want to just cook burgers, hot dogs, steaks, and things that I, I think the gas grill was great for because it was quick on, cook, quick off, easy cleanup. So I started to research the different types of grills that are out there from big green eggs to these pro Weber charcoal grills to smokers and things like that. And for a long time, about a year, I had found out Weber was coming out with this Summit charcoal grill, which was a big green eggs type grill. It was their answer to a ceramic grill. Um, but it had some of the the features of what their kettle grill has with the, the propane quick start. Um, it used charcoal, you could use wood, you could smoke with it. And for about a year, year and a half, that was the grill I was gonna get. I started putting some money away. It, it was expensive, it was like two grand. Um, and you know, I had read stuff about big green eggs and all these other things. So that's what I was gonna get. And at the last minute, I started finding these videos by All Things Barbecue, they're the Sauce Channel, it's a YouTube page they have, I'll, I'll link it in my description. But I started watching their cooking videos and they kept using this Yoder YS640, which I knew nothing about. As I started doing research on these pellet grills, I found there were mixed reviews on them. Some of the, the issue was they were great for smoking, the technology was neat because it kind of set it and forget it mentality but the issue was they were just great for smoking. Doing normal things like grilling burgers or hot dogs or something quick was, was tough to do. And that was something I still wanted to do and something the Weber would afford me. I could do these long smokes, but if I just wanted to do something quick, I, I could take advantage of that. What I found was the Yoder was a little bit different. Their firebox was off to the left, plugs in, it has software in it where you set the temperature just like you do with your oven uh, in your house. And if you put the temperature to 350, it uses an auger out of the hopper to feed the firebox pellets to get the temperature to 350. And it monitors that temperature and it holds that temperature continuing to feed pellets as it needs to maintain that heat. I think the thing that drew me to it the most was the software in it that allowed you to set a temperature and as long as there were pellets in the hopper, it would maintain that temperature. Because one of the things I was reading about all these guys out there that are doing these long smokes was they're attached to that grill during that time. And if you're cooking a brisket or any long smoke, I mean, you're talking 12, 16 hours, you could be sitting at this grill maintaining the fire. And while that sounds great and there's I think some pride in that and the the true guys out there that are doing these competitions there's they pride themselves on managing this heat I just with with everyday life I didn't want to be stuck in the house handcuffed to that grill during these smokes I wanted to have the ability to throw something on there put a temperature on and walk away I've had it now almost a year done several cooks on it. So I've done some quick things like burgers and last night we did burgers, hot dogs, um, chicken, and then I've done brisket, I've done pulled pork, I've done ribs. And so I just wanted to show you guys the grill, go over what I like about it, some of the things I don't like about it. It's a mess right now, but I thought, hey, I'll, sh I'll show you what it looks like after a cook and uh, and go through it. So first things first, before I show you the grill, we run through the grill, I've got to run to Lowe's and get some supplies, so let's take a little trip.
made it to Lowe's, I had a little complication with the time lapse, so that'll be interesting. My biggest struggle with coming to Lowe's is Best Buy is right next to it. And if I'm going to be at Lowe's, I always have this temptation to go check out new gadgets at Best Buy. But I'm going to resist the temptation of going over there. There's nothing I need, so let's get in there and get out of here. In and out of Lowe's without any issues. I didn't go into Best Buy. Cameron's not with me, so I don't have to go to Five Below. I am going to have to run to Home Depot. Another project I've been working on is my front lawn. I've got this patch of grass that just won't grow. I've done everything you can think of. No luck. And unfortunately, Lowe's doesn't have any sod. So we're going to go over to Home Depot and get that stuff before we head home and take care of the grill. Mission accomplished. Home Depot had what I was looking for. 10 rolls of sod that I'm going to lay down either before or after the grill extravaganza, but uh, time to go home and get to work. So I'm back from running my errands. I got the sod laid, everything set up there. Now I have time to commit to doing this project with the grill. You know, I, I'm going to start with the thing I like least about the grill. It's, it's minor. Um, but it's there nonetheless. And I'd, I hate starting with a negative. I'm a positive person and I wanted to go over all the things I like about it, but now that I've had it about a year, there's some things I need to do to touch it up and, and kind of go through it. I cooked on it last night, I haven't cleaned it yet, so I'm almost starting backwards. I'm gonna clean the grill, um, get some things in line, talk about the one thing I don't like about it, and then I'll go into all the things I like about it. So bear with me. I'm gonna speed through some of this and jump around. I don't think you guys need to see me clean the grill, but um, that's where we're at right now. So first, let's start with the grill cover. The, the grill cover is great. My neighbor made a funny comment. It's the first grill cover he's ever seen that was fitted like yoga pants are, and it is. It's fitted. You've got the chimney over here, so you've got that section. This is where the handle is, the hoppers over here with the handles cut out here. The, the only downside to that is because it's fitted and because you have these little areas, you get water that just sits there and collects. The other thing is it's great, it's water resistant, but I still noticed I'm getting some areas on the grill where it's like moisture is getting through the material. So I went on Amazon and I had bought this spray and I'll put it in the description if you want to check it out but I bought this spray that I sprayed down it's used for like motorcycle covers and stuff it's just an additional waterproofing feature for the grill so so there's that the other thing is I keep and it's not there right now it's probably in the grill cover but I keep just a either a, a trash bag or some kind of material over this hopper. They recommend you empty this every time. I don't empty it. Um, I leave everything in there. Um, so I put something over top of it just to keep water from getting in there. If water gets on those pellets, they turn into cement and they expand. It's, it seems to be a nightmare. So the, the initial thing you can see right off the bat are these little areas where the paint's just starting to chip and it's starting to rust. So this is the only thing about the grill I'm not happy about. They put this coating on it that's not like the Weber coatings, which has its pros and cons. Their thought is if we don't put that coating on, then you can touch up the grill and you can make it look brand new again. Whereas with those Weber grills, if they get nicked or anything like that, you're just done. It's You're left with what you have. So I'm getting all these little spots where You've got rust and I take pretty good care of this grill. I cover it up after I use it um, in here. I mean, just all this rust and then even on these grates and it might be hard to see, but I've got rust on these grates. And again, I, I clean it when I'm done with it. I keep it covered. It's not under a deck or any kind of covering. It's just the grill cover, but I, I'm, little disappointed that in less than a year I have the amount of rust that I have on it so what I'm gonna do today is uh, let me 
before I get into that, let me show you the inside. Inside looks really good. This is the two-piece diffuser plate. Again, I just cooked on this, so it's a mess, and that's why I'm gonna clean it today, but I figure you can see me go through that process and see what it looks like. So this rust issue I'm experiencing with the grill is clearly something that Yoder's aware of and familiar with because in their, um, on their chat boards, it's talked about a lot. And when I bought the grill, it came with this Yoder spray paint. It's a um, Yoder Smoker Satin Black High Performance Spray Paint. And they have all these recommendations for keeping up with your grill and keeping it clean. So the first thing I'm gonna do is clean it with the citrus safe. It recommends you clean it with some type of citrus to get all the gunk off the outside of it, which I'm gonna do. Then I'm gonna take a 120 grade sandpaper and I'm gonna get all that rust out of there and get it down to the metal. And I'm going to put a link in the, the description so you guys can see what's going on and how they recommend you clean it. So if you end up getting this grill, you'll have a place to come back and, and see what the recommendations are. Once I get it all sanded down, get all the rust spots out, then I'm gonna turn the grill on, get it warm like 180 degrees, and then I'm gonna spray paint it. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how this turns out. I'm a little bit nervous, to be honest with you. You buy an expensive grill, and I haven't had to do something like this before. But then again, I haven't bought a grill that's designed for smoking. So let's get to it. So I had to take a little break. We got a rain shower right as I turned on the grill. But rain stopped. I'm gonna spray paint the smoker. It's all heated up. Let's see how this works. pretty good not expert at painting as you can see but I think this looks pretty solid I was a little skeptical but let me let this dry and then I'll check it out and get back to you guys quick update so the grills dried everything looks great we've been getting rain off and on so I'm gonna call it quits the kids are hungry Lindsay went to the Sam Hunt concert so I'm gonna finish this tomorrow but I think it's looking really good right now actually surprised how well it did there's I ran out of paint so there's one spot that still needs to be touched up I need to finish the chimney but overall there's one little spot over here it does look really good I'll give it to Yoder you know I didn't expect it to turn out as well as it did and I was a little annoyed but they know what they're doing. I followed the instructions, sanded everything down, and it does look good. I guess if you're gonna invest in an expensive grill, there's gonna be maintenance. It's not like a Weber where you set it and forget it. So cleaning the grill is done. I got up this morning, came out, got everything cleaned up. Grill is almost back to 100%. I'm still waiting on paint so I can finish a couple spots I didn't get to complete, but overall, the grill looks great. So let's dive into the pluses and the minuses about the Yoder. So here it is, the Yoder YS640. Uh, start off, the, the biggest complaint I've read thus far about the, the grill is the, the wheels. People complain the wheels aren't robust and they're just puny. You know, I, I don't hate on the wheels because I don't move it but a couple feet either direction to get around it. So. I have no issues with it. Over to the left you have the pellet hopper and on the front this is your control panel. You got on off, you've got an increase button here, take the temperature up or down every five degrees, um, decrease, start, self-explanatory, and then this prime button. I like that prime button because if you open the hood and the temperature falls off it will add more pellets more quickly. Um, here's the display, it's at 397, and when you see the bars going straight across, it's telling you it's maintaining the temperature there. And my temperature, I have it set right now, is at 400. And here, you have the hopper where all the pellets go. There's an auger down here that pushes 
the pellets into the firebox. So all you need to do is keep that thing full and the grill itself manages the temperature. Inside, you have your top rack for smoking. They make this in a half shelf, which I'm gonna get at some point because when I'm doing burgers, right now I have to pull this out. With the half shelf, you could leave that in, throw some things up there and, and use it like a normal grill. Over here, if you can see it, that's the, the door for the diffuser plate. They have a one-piece diffuser plate and they have a two-piece diffuser plate. I love the two-piece diffuser plate because as you can see, I've got my grill grates right here. These are a must for grilling. Um, I throw those over the, the opening and I can grill burgers, hot dogs, anything you, you would want. And there's the flame. The pellets fall right from the side. So this design, is what I think makes it the best pellet grills because the fire box is off to the left. A lot of these grills have their pellet box in the center, so all the, the fire is right in the middle of the grill. This allows you to do grilling on the left. You can do stuff on the right. Um, it, all, all in all, it's, it's a, a great grill. So the other thing, these wire racks, these wire racks, I loved initially, um, but I'm not a huge fan of anymore. They, for some reason, are rusting like crazy, and I, I probably will switch these. They make a full stainless uh, steel shelf for the left and or for the front and the right side. Um, I think that's going to be easier. Plus, if you try to balance like barbecue sauce or little things on there, they always tip over. So I end up using cutting boards. And then the last thing is over here. You have this arm that pulls out. When you pull it all the way out, it's designed for smoking. Um, when you push it in, you can keep that fire controlled over for the left of the grill. So that's it. So who is this grill perfect for and who should consider investing the fourteen to $2,000 um, to have a Yoder? And when I started this, I mentioned how I was dead set on getting the Weber Summit Charcoal Grill. It was Weber's answer to the Big Green Egg and the Kamado Joe's. And while I still feel that the Weber Summit Charcoal Grill is a great grill, the reviews have been great, I couldn't get over the fact that the Yoder, for one, had a larger area internally, so I could do more with it if I wanted to do a huge barbecue and throw ribs on and a brisket and all these other things, I can do it on this grill. Um, additionally, it manages the temperature. That's the thing I can't get away from is it works like an oven. I set the temperature to whatever I want and it manages the temperature on its own. As long as there's pellets in the hopper, it'll take care of maintaining that heat. So for some of these things, you do a brisket, it's 16 hours. And while I don't knock the guys that are true pit masters and want to sit there and manage the fire on their big green eggs or their stick burning off, off center smokers, whatever they're called, you know, I, I don't have the time to sit here for 16 hours and manage a fire. Then when I started doing more research about managing the fire on these on the, either the Weber Summit Charcoal Grill or the Big Green Eggs, they make this device the Barbecue Guru, which is an add-on. It monitors the temperature of the, the grill, and when it needs to come up, a fan kicks on to blow air into the fire pit and get the temperature where it needs to be. So you have this technology monitoring the firebox. And for me, it was like, well, if I'm gonna spend $300 on that, for a ceramic or some kettle type grill, why wouldn't I get a Yoder which does that and it's, it's not an add-on, it's how the grill comes. So ultimately, I decide to go with the Yoder. I think it's a great grill for someone that is interested in getting into smoking. Maybe they're a novice, maybe they do competitions. I'm hearing more and more about people taking the, this grill to competitions, but someone that wants to eliminate the need to manage a fire. If you want to eliminate the need to manage a fire, but produce a great end product, this is the grill to get. I will say, I, I miss the ease of my gas grill, turning it on, temperature came up, but since I've had this grill, more and more people compliment 
the food that comes off of it. So I've been really happy with it. Little things here and there with uh, having to maintain the, the external look of the grill with having to sand down any rust spots and uh, cleaning it can be a pain having to pull everything off but overall it is an outstanding grill the food that comes off of it has just been phenomenal so hopefully it's helpful and if you have any questions don't hesitate to, to leave me a message and I'll do the best I can to answer them thanks so much for checking in Test. Testing. Why don't I see the sound? Ah, there we go. I don't need all that. How about this? Perfect. Adapter and you can put it on your Weber Summit charcoal grill. Nice. And while I still feel the Webbit, 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 Web it, web it, web it. I'm a frog now. Terrible. So this rust 